What's the bravest shot that you can choose to do as a filmmaker or cinematographer? In my opinion, it is the- In a world where nuclear war has begun, vampires fought back in super real 3D. In my opinion, it is the lockdown tripod shot, which is ironic because that is the very thing that I make fun of because that's like the thing that's like the amateur thing to do too is just throw a camera on a tripod and leave it. <laughs> this shot is kind of like going to a pool and a speedo. I mean, there's just, you can't hide anything. Trying to execute a lockdown tripod shot with the intention that in the edit, it's just going to play out in its entirety is extremely challenging. It's very brave to do because it's going to reveal everything about your set, everything about your lighting, everything about the acting, nothing can really be covered up by fast cuts. And that is not, I love having fast cuts. I got plenty of them in my videos, but when you throw one of these shots in there, it just, it draws your attention and it really makes all the movement shots that you've got going in other places stand out too. This is a good way to add a dynamic aspect to your video, but the thing is that people oftentimes avoid this shot. But if you really hone in on it, and you try to cultivate this one shot where everything has to happen and you gotta learn so much about the way that you do your composition, about the way that you do your lighting, about the way that you do your color contrast, about the way that you're gonna direct the actor through or the subject. If it's a product or something that's gotta move through the frame, you're having to hone in on every little detail and acknowledge which things might be distracting, what colors of objects aren't working. And it's much, much, much harder to give that opportunity to be that cynical and critical when you're doing a moving shot because moving shot you know you know that inevitably you're probably going to cut away in most cases and you can kind of cut earlier this and that when the whole interaction has to happen in one take like that um, it can be amazingly powerful but it's really challenging and I really recommend exploring it to help hone your skills so examples of times where I've done it I've done it in a lot of different things but in particular we'll just go with Trans Am the beginning of this 14 minute promotional video slash short film making of car this shot really runs a while and it harkens back to the Burt Reynolds piece that was so enormously successful for the company. Over on the Super Duty, we've still collected several million plays, uh, probably between Facebook and YouTube, I think it's around five, six million plays, and that's without Burt Reynolds, so pretty good. But keep in mind, that's a 14 minute video, right? That's for a car, and it doesn't have Burt Reynolds, and it still generated that much traffic, and the opening shots, like there's like two shots in the first full minute. Now check, check this out, just feel this out. Feel the power of this, and then how much excitement starts to happen as it bleeds in to the movement parts that follow. I believe that the Trans Am is arguably the most recognizable American muscle car in history. In every one of us lives a little bit of a bandit a little bit of an outlaw. So in 1977, you have a nation watching as the bandit races across the silver screen. Bold, audacious, it was fearless. A new generation of car lovers is born. And my brother and I are right there with them. I was 19 when I owned my first Trans Am. It became part of who I was. So I would have never thought as a 16 year old boy watching that movie that one day I could be part of an effort to preserve an international brand like the Trans Am. The Super Duty was the car that was not supposed to happen. And the list of why is long. Todd said, well, I was really thinking the Super Duty. I was like, I hadn't thought about the Super Duty. The Super Duty was a very iconic car. There was a lot of restrictions on cars in 74. If you're into muscle cars, it was a tough year. But yet the Super Duty was like, whoa. And then you heard it and you're like, wow, okay. And then you drove it and all of a sudden it's the total package. So let's just talk about what a Super Duty is. Super Duty has a really big engine, a really big dangerous engine. A 2017 Super Duty we have 455, makes massive amounts of power. We knew collectively that we had to do that because that's super duty. Brendan, absolutely driving force behind taking the power to that level. We make in excess of a thousand horsepower and over a thousand pound feet of torque. 
you're talking beyond the euphemisms of stump pulling power. We're talking about spinning tires in third gear, fourth gear, as many gears as you've got the courage to go through. And you can still do a little post zoom. That was a post zoom. I just locked it down post zoom. So when I filmed that, I was actually four, three or 400 feet away from the entire barn outside. There was another set of barn doors on the opposite wall that I chose to open up so I could get really far back and film the entire thing with a 180 millimeter macro lens. Yes, the same lens that I used in the video for the macro uh, is a must have. And these are some ants just having a feast on the cicada, or cicada. And check this out, one guy crawls right out of his stomach. Good. I don't even know what it was holding. Was that a piece of its rib? It doesn't have a rib, does it? That's kind of ridiculous. And up here, this is a screen door that I'm tilting up the camera and pulling focus on to reveal a frog. Look at the detail in that frog. You just can't get that any other way. That is a macro lens thing. Because it makes amazing long shots too. It makes amazing portraitures. It's a very interesting lens to work with. But in this case, I got way outside the barn with the doors open on the opposite side as well and filmed it that far away. That opening shot with Burt Reynolds, it was the same thing. Actually, I think that was the one, it was. Oh, I used the 180 on that one too. I thought maybe it was a 7200, but it was not. It was also the 180 macro. And again, I got on the complete opposite end of the 35,000 square foot facility, Trans Am Worldwide, and that's how far I was away from Bert when I was filming it. And I remember hearing, <laughs> I could hear, he had a lava on just in case, and I could hear in the, uh, when I was monitoring with headphones, and I could hear him say, what? A million miles away. He couldn't spot me. <laughs> I was so far away during the take. Now, you don't have to do a lockdown shot with a long lens like that. That's just what I chose to do there. I have other lockdown shots that I used a lot in uh, the Georgia Honeys music video. And that I used a lot of wider lensings rather than the 180. And that was different. And it had a lot of cross dissolves that were extremely slow, but I wanted to play into these amazingly large murals. Well, it seems so long ago the day I my first Gennett song, I turned it up. I wanted Linda and Kelly to kind of feel like pieces of the art in a way, kind of coming out of the wall. Now I know this isn't necessarily what people thought, but this was my vision of why I chose to do lockdown shots. Plus the music was slower and I thought that it worked for it. So there's a time and a place to use these lockdown shots. I'm just recommending that you try them out because they really, they really spice up your video if you do them right. And it forces you to just have to get really cynical and nuanced about your opinion in what's working and what's not working. Especially if you're a one man band like I am 99% of the time, you know, when you're moving the camera, it can be kind of hard to also be directing the actor when you get to see the actors play through the scene. with You can really analyze and scrutinize what's working and what's not working about it. So highly recommend this shot. You're kind of achieving something that you normally only see in cinema and you don't see it that often in product videos or music videos that are done on lower budgets. You wanna try and mimic aspects that are happening in that arena into your lower production videos. Anyway guys, I hope that that helps you out. I hope it gives you a couple of ideas. If you wanna keep up with what I'm doing, by all means hit the subscribe button. Uh, if not, a like is great, much appreciated. But either way, I hope that you got something out of this. I hope that it kind of inspires you to go back to the roots of simplicity and then focus on your, your lighting, your composition, your, your, your everything matters, your lens choice, your directing of the actor or directing of what the product needs to do. You know, there's just a lot of things that you can hone in on there and come out of it was something that's actually going to add a lot of maturity to your end videos that is uh, oftentimes not being done right now. So I like working that and when I can, but it does depend on the mood of the video, what's going on. You have to be flexible as to is this the right thing for this. Anyway, have fun with that guys and I'll catch you on the next one.